Hi folks, welcome to Bit Retro Journal. This is a quick clip, five minutes or less. Um, in September, I was watching some Septandi videos and there was one where they were using a um, this network controller box to network the old late 70s, early 80s TRS-80 Model 1 and 3 together and that really got me intrigued. Um, and so it turns out it was actually just a simple uh, amplifier uh, with a connection to the input and output speaker and, 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 and mic. Let me show you uh, on my desktop what that actually was. Yep, so here is a, a, an article, Network One Control, and it was this box right here, and it cost $500, and all this really was was an amplifier that had 16 connections from your base computer to the other ones. Now, it had a switch so you could actually have one of the network computers, uh, basically it switched ear and mic so that you could send something back, but it was all done through the cassette interface, which is pretty cool but and interesting. But I figured, I think my Time of Sinclair 1000s could do this as well. So let's go back to the desktop. And so I have um, here the two Time of Sinclair 1000s hooked up. Uh, this one is on this screen and this one is on that screen. And what I want to do is just uh, load a 1KHS uh, on both of them at the same time. Uh, let's give it let's give it a try. And it's about a 23 second load, so it shouldn't take much longer. Um, and it's nice that the uh, this is the TV still which uh, can do any RF signal and look it doesn't actually go away. So it's much more like the old school TVs where you can see the whole signal. And, uh, it actually has um, uh, one uh, one KHS running on both computers, so that's pretty cool. Now it would be even cooler if you could network these two things together, right? Now it turns out there is a problem to do that, and and the problem is as follows. Um, I, I've already done one recording, but let me throw this out. If I I have this computer, which is displaying on here, so let, let's reboot these. This one is, is not, that's sort of my um, computer that I'm kind of in pieces yet. Um, but here I'm going to write a quick program. Oops. Uh, print, oops, print, hello. And I'm going to save it, uh, call it hi. And I have a sound recorder that I'm going to sound record here. So I'm going to start recording. And I'm going to say hit enter, and it's only going to be a, a few seconds. And uh, it should be done now. Perfect. So I'm going to stop recording, and I'm going to put it on the desktop. And I'm going to turn my speaker back on, and you'll see when I play this. You can hear the hum, and it's going to play here in a second. Yeah, not very loud because it's a line out and needs amplification. Here's what, how loud it needs to be if I play this one just for a second. So you can see the difference. And so, yeah, in order to get these two computers to communicate together, you would need to um, hook them up uh, where there is an amplifier in between. Um, and that's what this that $500 thing does. It's just an amplifier. Um, maybe it'll filter and clean up the signal and then allows you to switch uh, these things between the, you know, if you have multiple ones so that you can send something back. Um, another interesting thing I would love to try is, uh, you saw an early video I did uh, earlier this year, uh, ZX Spectrum that can read in ZX81 programs. And it would be kind of cool to also use the, to try to distribute a program to both the Spectrum and at time you say Claim 1000 to see if they both could read it in. Uh, that would be kind of cool as well. I'm going to do other networking videos where I actually use the CX uh, interface one and my QL. But this was just interesting because I wanted to see if I could use a cassette interface to interface between uh, these two computers. And well, I, I can distribute multiple ones to one. So that's pretty cool. In any case, that's all I wanted to show today. So um, thanks for joining me and I'll see you next time.